Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, I'd like to pass this microphone first to Ms. Shanaz al Tabi to open the conference. She is a Deputy Permanent Secretary in Preventative Health Services for the Botswana Medic uh, Ministry of Health. This is al -Hab. to open the first spine care conference that to ever be held in this country. As many of you are aware, many conferences that bring in international guests usually take place in places like Kaburoni and Francistown. I therefore applaud the organizers for having thought of Mahalapi. This, is, of course, was done after considering many issues. I am also very pleased as I look around that the attendance is actually quite commendable. So I thank the organizers for that. Um, and, I, and I also believe that perhaps this is one of the advantages of having these conferences that where you sort of really get um, maximum um, attendance. On behalf of the government of Botswana, I also would like to take this opportunity to welcome you, our international um, visitors, to this beautiful country. We hope that you enjoy your stay and you have an opportunity this time to see more of our country. If not, please dialize Botswana as your destination of choice for your next Mexican vacation. I'm not saying that this is a vacation, vacation but for the planned vacation. Mahalapi being an orthopedic and family medical uh, medicine center was an ideal location for World Spine Care to develop its model uh, clinics. It was also in line that we have in the Ministry of Health of providing specialist care in the rural areas. Of course, the dedicated staff of um, the Mahalapi District Hospital under the stewardship of Dr. Ross and Mahalapi DHMT also played a contributing factor in this um, decision. We at the Ministry of Health are very pleased with the progress of the World Spine Care Program. The feedback we are receiving on the impact of the care being offered by World Spine Care volunteers has been excellent. Our hope is that this program will continue and grow over the next few years and expand into other communities within the country. What is particularly important for us is that the World Spine Care Program will be sustained by becoming an integral part of Botswana's healthcare services. This requires that our own healthcare professionals increase their understanding of the latest developments in the understanding of the pathophysiology, diagnosis, and treatment of spinal disorders. There are many applaudable uh, initiatives that uh, we in the Ministry of Health will be working with uh, World Spine Care. For example, the World Spine Care has a program to offer scholarships to Botswana citizens to study abroad and advance their education and advance their education in the in, in various um, areas. I also believe that as we move forward, it is important that prevention of sp some spinal disorders becomes a major focus in various sectors, and we need to work closely with the ministries of, ed of education, ministries of, infra of uh, infrastructure, and so forth. Uh, and we also need to. Um, look at how we manage and also rehabilitate um, those clients that we um, come across. The conference uh, is part of the sustainability mission that the Ministry of Health and World Spine Care are offering to healthcare providers in the country to increase their understanding of spinal disorders. We hope that conferences such as this will become a regular part of our healthcare continuing education program. I can only urge you to spread the learnings as you get back to your respective stations. At this point, I also want to thank the World Spine Care volunteers who have come to Botswana to offer their expertise in the clinics in Mahalapa and Shoshone. This is indeed commendable. Relocating to new places is not always easy, particularly when you have families. And so um, I'd really like to thank these, uh, these uh, volunteers for this uh, compassion and, and um, uh, um, humanitarian 
commitment. And this is very much appreciated. And as you may know, it's actually well in line with our Vision 2016 pillar, one of the pillars of being a just and compassionate um, nation. I would like to thank the speakers who have come, outstanding speakers. Uh, earlier this morning, I um, happened to meet with one of our international visitors who was coming because some of the speakers um, that were coming to present, she knew and thought you know, and, and, and felt that it was worthwhile to travel all the way to come and actually listen to these speakers. So um, I um, would like to thank the organizers for having brought these outstanding speakers who have come around the world to present the very latest information on the management of spinal disorders. We have speakers from as far as uh, the United States, Canada, Australia, Turkey, Europe, and they've taken time from their busy uh, schedules uh, and, and academic duties, really, to come and be with us here in Botswana. So we thank you for having come here. I would also like to um, thank the um, International Spine Care Society who have sponsored these speakers. My speech has uh, deliberately steered away from um, the technical aspects of um, spinal disorders uh, deliberately because as you can see the program you have, you, know, you, have, you have those experts in this room here to tell you about the, you know, the magnitude of these spinal disorders and how best that we can actually manage them. But nevertheless I, I, I just wanted to um, emphasize that um, spinal disorders are really a growing public health concern and, and, and one in Botswana as well and I think um, we need to actually um, start, like yesterday, addressing these, but also um, address them in a holistic manner, such that we're not only looking at the curative component, but it's also saying how do we educate the communities about spinal disorders? How do we interact with the schools on actually um, early you know, signs and symptoms? How do we interact with our healthcare providers in, 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 in terms of primary healthcare, the lower level in terms of the screening? And then how do we then link up with the curative component? And then how then do we link up with the rehabilitative component? So this whole life course, I think, is, is critical as we move forward to address um, in, uh, spinal disorders, but also so that we don't have the silent epidemic as non-communicable diseases, which we're seeing with the cancers and diabetes and so forth is a good example. So I think we have enough lessons learned to actually try to sort of move in a much more different, integrated, and successful approach. And so I'd really like to thank um, World Spinal Care for um, really focusing on this integrated approach. And uh, just a few days ago, for, for many of you here, I, I had an opportunity to interact with some of the senior management in the Ministry of Health with um, the team, the World Spinal Care team in Kaboni. And I was impressed by the integrated holistic approach that is being planned for muscle skeletal conditions in this country. I believe a lot of what is being planned is very feasible. It's realistic, doable, and a good example of effective partnerships. And uh, as many of you are aware, that we are challenged by um, human resource constraints, challenged by financial constraints. So this is a good partnership that allows us to address the, these challenges uh, as we move forward. Um, I also noted uh, with satisfaction during our interactions that um, what we are having today here is not just an end, but that there are proposals that we should have more of these as we move forward, and that there should be some kind of annual events of this nature here. And so, of course, this is resource permitting, but it, it allows us for us to go back to our respective you know, stations, create that necessary awareness amongst our colleagues, and then continue creating that awareness so that we can actually have that urgency to actually continue with this such kind of good efforts. Um, yeah, during the interactions, also, we discussed how can we benefit from such learnings. And as we move forward, and of course, we discuss issues of um, some of these trainings that we get. How can we um, use them for our own professional development? You know, issues of um, whether they could be used for our CPDs and so forth. So there are discussions in that direction. So I think these are good beginnings. There's a lot more that can come. That there is a research where we should be able to um, allow ourselves to participate in these. But I think most importantly, as we move forward, and, and, and this was also another area that came up, was the issue of capacity building. And as we move forward with the World Spinal Care, we move forward with the areas of trainings, um, issues of mentorship should come out, that we should be able to train our own people and be, build capacity and our people, so that even when the World Spinal Care team has left, we are able to sustain these initiatives. So it's important that um, you out there listen to them, where you find that you have potential and you are interested, come forward and tell them, I would like to partner with you in these areas. I would like to be 
a local counterpart on some of these research projects and so forth. And this is an opportunity for us to move forward and create that necessary skills transfer, the mentorship, and the capacity building that we require. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you, um, unfortunately, the PS is away, and so I'm actually holding several offices, and so I'm a little bit busy, so I will leave a little bit earlier than planned. But I, if I'd known a lot earlier, I would definitely schedule the whole afternoon, because I do see the schedule is very um, interactive, very, um, and one can learn a lot. But I, I wish you, um, uh, you know, uh, good deliberations, and, 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 and um, for us to stimulate that discussion and move forward in the area of public health, in the areas of, you know, to be able to participate in global health discussions. So thank you all. Now I'd like to pass the microphone to Dr. Kunal Bose, the superintendent of Mahalapa Hospital. Welcome people to Mahalapa. <coughs> vision to improve access to care to all, as my uh, deputy PS has already alluded to in, in the past. We all feel honored by your presence and feel that you have chosen, and that the fact that you have chosen Mahalate. Your commitment uh, from the very onset has been an impetus for us to grow further. And we have had a wonderful working relationship with the World Spine Care Team, and I hope this will continue, sir. And I hope many more international conferences may come, will be held here. I thank you all. Where the, the resources are limited <coughs> and where the opportunities are tremendous. This conference is the highlight of what we have done so far as a team, as a World Spine Care team. It is the expectation of World Spine Care that we can provide continuing education for Botswana healthcare professionals, advance the understanding of the importance of diagnosis and management of spinal disorders in Botswana, and to advance multidisciplinary care and cooperative care. We were lucky enough to have sufficient sponsors to uh, offer this conference free to Botswana uh, uh, employees of the Ministry of Health and with minimal cost to clinicians in private practice. The sponsorship of this, <coughs> of this meeting is by the Botswana Ministry of Health and the Mahalapi District Hospital who help with the distribution and the advertising, advertisement and the promotion of the conference. We're extraordinarily privileged that the major international spine societies, such as the North American Spine Society, the International Society for the Study of the Lumbar Spine, and the Eurospine, the Spine Society of Europe, the South African Spine Society, the Chiropractic Association of, uh, of South Africa, the World Federation of Chiropractic, and the Swiss Spine Institute also provided uh, sponsorship for this organization, for this meeting. We're especially thankful to uh, Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College who has graciously donated 
for paying for our lunches. And I want to give a thanks to Jean Moss, president of the Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, who volunteered to pay for our lunches. They, by the way, are also offering a free scholarship for a Botswana citizen to come and study, to, uh, to become a chiropractor or a primary spine care clinician in Botswana. We are also very fortunate, and what, we're also very fortunate that the Cresta Hotel was willing to donate this conference room without cost to the to the meeting. So we've been, so we've been able to put on this cost at uh, this conference at very minimal cost to everybody involved, and with a wide support of people around the world. This particular conference is going to discuss a number of things. We're going to discuss the burden of spinal disorders, evidence-based treatment guidelines, spine imaging and MRI scan, scoliosis screening program in the community, the preventative component, non-surgical management, and a variety of, we have just an outstanding group of surgeons who are going to talk about different aspects of surgery we're going to talk about research, and we're going to present the model of care that, spine, that World Spine Care is considering. The goals of this conference is to provide understanding of the importance of spinal disorders and the impact of these disorders on society. To provide an overview of how current evidence-based guidelines for imaging, diagnosis, and management can guide our treatment approaches to people with spinal disorders to provide some insight on how screening for spinal disorders can be instituted in the school programs, to provide an overview of the indications of spine surgery and the different surgical procedures that can be considered, to provide an overview of the research being considered by World Spine Care, and to provide information to you on the future goals and the model of care which is currently being considered by World Spine Care. Hopefully at the end of this conference, you will have some understanding of these different aspects of the spinal disorders. So I'm, my initial presentation today is to try and impact, give you the information of just how important spinal disorders might be. We travel the world and everybody talks about HIV AIDS, malaria, cancer, stroke, everything like this as being very, very important diseases. You ask anybody about low back pain, what do they say? How many people here have low back pain today? Put your hands up. How many have had low back pain in the last year? Okay. How many have had cancer in the last year? How many have had a stroke in the last year? It just shows how prevalent this disease is, or this disorder. We actually don't like calling it a disease anymore. In December, the most important international survey of the burden of disease was published in the journal Lancet. And there are two particular papers in this group which are extraordinarily informative. The first is on disability adjusted life years, so-called DALIs. This is the amount of disability life years that are lost for 291 different diseases and injuries in 21 regions of the world. They also published a second, there are about eight papers in this group, but only two are, are pertinent to, are, are particularly important here. The second was years lived with disability as YLDs for 160, uh, 1160 sequelae of 289 diseases and injuries. Let's find out what they said. Before we do that, this particular study was sponsored by the World Health Organization and five different universities, Harvard Medical School, University of Queensland in Australia, 
Johns Hopkins University in the US, University of Tokyo, and the Imperial College in London. And it was sponsored by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It has become the foremost and the latest research on this topic. Now let's find out what they did. First statement they made is that musculoskeletal conditions such as low back pain, neck pain, and arthritis affect 1.7 billion people worldwide. MSK conditions have a greater overall impact on health of the world population, considering both death and disability, than HIV AIDS, all tropical diseases combined, the forces of war and nature combined, and all neurological diseases combined. For a neurologist, that's bad for our business. The second point is that the, the increase in DALIs from musculoskeletal disorders increased by 45% between 1990 and 2010. If we just now look at spinal disorders, low back pain was the single leading cause of disability worldwide, cause more disability than any of the other conditions they looked at. 10% of all disability is caused by low back pain. And neck pain was number four in the list. Low back pain is the sixth most important contributor of the global burden of disease. That's both deaths and disability. Then malaria or tuberculosis, preterm birth complications, chronic obstructive lung disease, diabetes, or lung cancer. When you combine neck pain with low back pain, you then find that the impact or the burden is second only to ischemic heart disease in its imp impact in the global burden of disease. Back and neck pain combined have a greater impact than HIV AIDS, malaria, low respiratory infection, stroke, <coughs> breast and cancer combined, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, depression, or traffic injuries. And what is the concern is that the global disease burden has shifted away from communicable diseases to non-communicable diseases and from premature death, as we've gotten control of this, to years lived with disability, compared to a similar study in 1990. So there's a move in emphasis from death from premature birth and infectious diseases to non-communicable diseases and diseases causing disability. This is not the only study that's looked at this, however. The World Health Organization, the World Bank, published a World Report on Disability in 2011 and noted that more than a billion people in the world today experience disability. And they estimate that 3.8% of the population of this world has severe disability, incapacitating disability. Just to add to that, the 2006 census data in Ireland noted that 9.3% of the population were disabled, and if they added pain and breathing disorders, almost 20% of the population was disabled. And mobility problems were the single greatest and most important. And of those mobility problems, arthritis, rheumatism, and, rheumatism, and back problems were considered the most common health conditions related to disability. Now, if you look at this world disability prevalence, what you know in the statistics is that it's greater in lower income countries than in higher income countries. It's greater in females rather than males. It is greater in the elderly compared to the younger. It is greater in rural areas than in urban areas and it is greater in the poorest quintile of any population compared to the highest quintile. So it is the poor, older, woman, rural communities that suffer the most, and they have the least access to care. In the United States, where we actually have lots and lots of care, the Pain Society looked at the incidence 
of pain in the community. 76 million people suffer from pain. Only 20 million suffer from diabetes. 17 million from stroke and 1.4 million from cancer. And one third of all people in pain say it's disabling. It just overwhelms all these other diseases. And if you look at the primary causes of pain, back pain is number one, migraine is important, neck pain is number three, and some other pains also are relative. Now the greatest problem for a society is that the most highest incidence of back pain occurs. This is age versus dalliance. And the highest incidence, the greatest impact occurs in the 20 to 50 age age. That's the most productive time, age, of anybody, of any population. And therefore, it's impacting the most productive people in our community. And it reduces our ability to function. In the United States, the total burden of low back pain, oh, sorry, in Switzerland, sorry, in Switzerland, the total burden of low back pain was estimated to be caused 1.6 to 2.3 percent of gross national product. That was its impact. And the figures, if we look at those figures and apply them to the United States, it would, record, it would impose a financial burden in the United States somewhere between 200 and 287 billion dollars. Fort Knox, you know, which is the biggest repository of gold in the world, has a value of 257 million. So back pain is costing them the equivalent of Fort Knox every year in the United States. It is a huge problem. So what about treatment? Surely we're smart doctors, we know what we're doing, we're smart. And the question is, can the burden of spinal pain be impacted by expensive high-tech treatment approaches in rich countries. In other words, if we really throw lots of money at it, can we cure it? Can we prevent this? And then the second, what is the impact of no treatment? Well, we tried that in the United States. We increased the total expenditures on treatment of, of, of low back and neck pain. This is a paper in the Journal of the American Medical Association a couple of years ago. We increased the amount of money we spent by 60%. Increased medications by 188%, narcotic or opioid medication by over 400%, outpatient by 50%, 43%, inpatient services and surgery by 87%, chiropractic costs by 111%, physiotherapy expenditures by 78%. We really threw big time money at this. And what happened? Although the total expenditures increased by 60%, the physical functioning limitations increased by 20 to 20, to, from 20 to 25 percent. The more money we spent, the sicker the population became. So the treatment is not more money. The treatment is a different model. Now, the treatment is not no care. And when we came here and visited, Dr. Kunal and his staff basically said, that 25 to 40 percent of the popular of the patients who show up in the in the outpatient clinics in in, uh, uh, in Mahalapi had complaints of spinal disorders. And when we went to a small hospital in Ranthambore, India, in a rural area, they also said that 24, 25 to 40 percent of their pop, outpatient population had back complaints. So no care doesn't serve the purpose. So we have to find something else. And that's hopefully what we're trying to do here. In conclusion, spinal and musculoskeletal disorders constitute a global health crisis. The treatment models in rich countries appear to increase disability. The lack of any significant treatment for spinal disorders for people in poorer countries does not reduce disability. And there is a growing awareness that we need a new model of care. So how are we addressing this problem? The first address came from the Bone and Joint Decade 2000-2010. This was an initiative endorsed by the United Nations, launched by the World Health Organization with headquarters at that time in Sweden, national networks in 97 countries, endorsed by governments in 61 countries, 
hundreds of professional organizations got together. That has now been extended. It's been my privilege to be a, in, one of the international ambassadors for the Bone and Joint Decade for over 10 years now. Part of their initiative is the World Spine Care Organization. This is a project supported by the Bone and Joint Decade, a nonprofit public charity registered in the United States and Canada with the goal of helping people in spinal disorders in underserved communities around the world. We're privileged, as I said, to have Desmond, Archbishop Desmond Tutu as, the, as our, on our advisory council and Elon Musk, who happens to be a South African, who is uh, CEO of uh, SpaceX and sending all these rockets to the new space station. He was the, the uh, co-founder of PayPal, uh, which many of you may use. He's a, a very prominent and very smart man. We've been endorsed uh, by the Bone and Joint Decade, International Society of South and Lumbar Spine, the same group of societies that have endorsed this meeting and supported this meeting. We have five, four, five collaborating university and institutions that are involved in the research, including the University of South Florida, the University of Southern Denmark, the University of Hawaii, Pharma College Chiropractic, and the Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, and we're hoping to have the University of Botswana involved as well when we can find the right people. The goals of World Spine Care is to establish spine care programs, which we've done here, develop preventative programs, build local capacity through mentorship, mentorship, education, and training, ensure sustainability, and then transfer the clinics to local management. The history of, the, of, of World Spine Care in Botswana, we met initially in February 2010 with the Ministry of Health and many representatives in the country including Dr. Bose. In June 2011, we came again and signed a memorandum of understanding with, between, uh, with Dr. Malefo. In October 2011, Jeff Alderbridge and his family arrived in Mahalapi. In December, the Mahalapi Clinic opened. In August 2012, the Shoshone Clinic opened. And now in April, we have our Mahalapi Spine Care Conference. It has moved very rapidly with everybody involved. Very briefly, the Mahalapi, you're going to hear this in more detail from Dr. Alderbridge, but since April, uh, up until April 2013, which is just over a year, 212 new patients have been seen, 1,350 office visits. We've had one full-time volunteer and nine short-term volunteers. If we look at those clinics, 80% we believe, we haven't got our full outcome studies sorted out yet, but just by uh, anecdotal analysis, 80% seem to find significant improvement in their symptoms. We've had three patients identified who likely require surgery, six patients with compression fractures, and two patients with severe deformity, one of them you can see here. The Shoshone Clinic opened in August 22, 2012, has only been open just over six months. The government supplied a five-room porter cabin for us. Treatment toad cables were donated by a, a corporation in uh, Canada. Uh, we've seen 140 new patients with 900 office visits. These are mostly old, older pa patient population, three identified likely to require surgery and six with compression fracture. We have education scholarships established, which I've already spoken about. They've been offered by two colleges and travel and living expenses we, our MOU with the Botswana government will cover uh, the travel and uh, living expenses of candidates seeking their, their education overseas. Community and education programs are being, being established and we'll talk about those. Some include the scoliosis uh, screening program. Some of the other include a community education program which we've now translated into Setswana. Uh, this is a program by, that's used by the World Spine Day, by the President's, U.S. President's Council of Physical Fitness and Sports, by the United States Bone and Joint Decade, and by a number of other agencies and associations. A second community-based education program we, the program we hope to initiate is a Straighten Up and Move Lifestyle Choices, again endorsed by numerous organizations, 
And I just happen to like this message. Choose to improve. Choose to enjoy healthy, invigorating activity. Choose to live tobacco free. Choose healthy foods. Choose good posture. Choose a balanced, supportive book bag backpack. Choose a comfortable, supportive mattress. Choose to be quiet and choose to serve others. I think it's a wonderful message and a message we will be promoting uh, in our educational programs. The scoliosis and deformity screening will be discussed uh, by Joan Holderman at, at a later time, but it's again a community education program. The research, we have two uh, research projects which are being initiated in Botswana and they will be discussed later. The first on the prevalence, burden and care of spinal disorders among Botswana in village Shoshong and the second is the creating the model of care and, uh, and training uh, frontline healthcare workers. Our financial advisor, we could not do this without some financial support and so we constantly looking out. We want to expand what we do, so we're constantly looking for financial support. But we have been fortunate. We have a corporate sponsor by the name of Palladian Health. We have the Skoll Foundation. He was the founder of uh, uh, eBay as, uh, and the Mass Foundation, who's on our board, as I mentioned, the Bechtel Trust, uh, the Parma College of Chiropractic, the Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, uh, the Vicky Ann Palmer Foundation, Elite Tables, who has given us the tables we've talked about, and a number of personal grants from others, including various small grants from various associations, chiropractic and other associations. And we're now getting some grants from churches as well, so that we can carry out and do what we, we need to do. The model, <coughs> what we're hoping to do in the future is develop this model and test the cultural sensitive, low tech, low cost, sustainable model of spine care with distance counseling and consulting and visiting surgery and surgical and specialist care. We've already initiated some of these contacts with various hospitals, including the Mahalapi uh, District Hospital, to see what can be done. We hope to open the clinics in Botswana and other countries and establish a surgical treatment mentoring program. And that's part of what we're doing this visit. We're hoping to do data collection and funding of additional research and increase, hopefully, be able to provide additional educational conferences in the future, increasing educational problems for the public, nurses, doctors, and first responders, the scoliosis screening program, and scholarships for training in spinal disorders. My colleagues, and particularly our vice president, uh, <laughs> Margaret and Audi, <laughs> we've only known each other for about 50 years, <laughs> uh, came up with this wonderful uh, uh, anagram called the Bravo concept. Why this conference is important? Because knowledge promotes care of excellence at low cost for the patient, community, and government. Rural and remote areas have special problems. Advances are made and must be culturally adopted and accepted. Voices from the clinicians on site must be presented and discussed as a forum for networking. An organization and support from government and specialized world leading societies for quality is necessary. We hope if we do this, we can create a true integrated spine care program. It is hoped that the spine care conference will become an annual event in Botswana to promote and exchange knowledge for clinical evidence-based care and promote research for people with spinal disorder uh, in rural areas. It will draw attention to, to Botswana government, who is a recognized problem for rural health nationally and, for in, and internationally uh, in its specific problems. And it will hopefully attract worldwide expertise and knowledge to find solutions. The world will know about the Mahalapi Conference. I'd like you just to know that this conference was advertised on all the major international spine society web pages. And those spine societies probably have in the neighborhood of 70 or 80,000 members around the world. And we'll be giving them a report, which we hope they will post as well. 
and we hope to set up national and international spine networks for public health and spine care for rural communities. This is a volunteer organization. Nobody gets paid in this organization. I don't get paid. Nobody gets paid. These are organizations, anybody who wants to join. If any of you want to join, you're welcome to join us in our going forward. It's simply time, energy, expertise at any level. All are well. 